Okay. Good morning. <laughs> it is truth be told. True stories of the Mount Elphinstone Peace Camp. Good morning. Uh, I just woke up and I thought, hey, you know, a lot of crazy stuff happened on that mountain. Um, and uh, it went on for quite a while. So uh, and it's it's never really over because uh, Peace Camp lives in my heart and my soul forever. But um, for people who are watching this that have no idea what I'm talking about, in uh, the late summer of 1999, I moved to a small community in British Columbia, Canada called Roberts Creek. And when I got there, uh, one of the first things people told me about was their beloved um, Mount Elphinstone and how much they loved it and how much they cared about it and how much they didn't want the forest to come down and how uh, they were, in fact, a community built almost on uh, protecting the forest and the sacredness of it and so on. And uh, so I was coming from Vancouver and um, had just finished a um, a really long uh, stint. Someone's knocking at my door. I'm going to ignore them. I love doing that. Um, and because um, I haven't invited anybody over. You know what I mean? Um, so the... Um, yeah, so I was a... Or, had recently moved there from the city as an act, an ex-activist, uh, you know, and um, and then uh, I was in, um, there's a really awesome guy, and his name is Rick, and everybody knows who he is, um, and so I was living in his little house next to his big house that he built, and by the way, his son is a gem, a gem. So, um, I, so I was just being a housewife kind of, and, and, uh, something came over me and I, I, I started to question, um, many things about life. And I, but the thing that was really coming up was the monks and the sadhus, the sages and the yogis who seemed to continue to tell us to go to the mountain by ourselves, go to the forest by ourselves, and that's where the answers are. And so um, my husband was at work, my kids were at school, I have three children grown, and um, when they, whenever we got home that night, they noticed that there was a tent, a sleeping bag, and a few other things piled up at the door. And uh, after a few hours, my son finally said, well, mom, what is that? And I said, I'm going up to that mountain. I'm going to stay up in the forest. Um, I didn't have a lot of explanation for that. But because I was kind of a homebody, my kids were grown and they were kind of sick of, of mom around the house anyways, probably. Uh, they said, yeah, great idea, mom. Why don't you just, hey, you know what I mean? You never go. So uh, they literally took me up to a camp where I stayed by myself and did discover many, many amazing things about Buddhism. Those are for later stories. What I want to do right now, actually, is just throw a bunch of teasers in there for you for future um, Truth Be Told uh, Mount Elphinstone Peace Camp videos, okay? So this, from 1999, this story goes on and on and on, okay, for years and years and years of fighting with the Ministry of Forests. And I'll just tell you that all the trees that I was protecting in 2000 are still standing. And um, so this involves police, this involves arrest, this involves me screaming and yelling, this involves me in very dangerous situations, this involves Sasquatch helping us out at different times. Yeah, really it does. This involves, um, uh, unique and unusual negotiations between myself and logging companies and the Ministry of Forests. Um, and sadly, part of the reason that I'm telling these stories is it also involves uh, backstabbing, gossiping, and, um, and, and, and behind the scenes weirdness that I unfortunately had to endure while I was doing my best to do certain things. 
not realizing that um, I was not exactly the chosen poster girl of the movement, according to uh, a lot of people who lived in Roberts Creek. So I'm going to imagine that um, there'll be quite a few people in Roberts Creek who won't really like these stories, and they might not appreciate the fact that I've decided to tell the truth after uh, many, many years of uh, having the finger pointed at me um, for things that weren't even true. So um, I'm going to leave you with this one little story, though, and that is about those trees that are still standing up there now, and it's 2020, okay? So uh, one, at one point, and this is like many, many times, I would be standing on the road uh, talking to the logger who was had come up there that day to cut, and we'd be having a regulation argument, you know, uh, jobs versus cutting down the trees, whether or not we live at the bottom of a watershed, whether or not our, our uh, environment really is at risk, and so on and so on and so on. And it is starting to get a little bit, you know, starting to wire itself up a bit. And at a certain point, he says, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I say, yeah, yeah. Well, these, every single one of these trees are my friends. <laughs> and he says, yeah. Well, what are their names? <laughs> and then we both started laughing. As you know. The, the idea is that we are one, we are all one, and the um, the loggers truly are just doing what they believe is right, and the whole entire logging issue uh, boils down to um, um, uh, imbalanced uh, leadership at the top, which, which makes all of us fight with each other at the bottom. Uh, okay, well... <sighs> Let's see, what else should I let you know about this whole thing that's going to happen? Because they're going to keep telling these stories. Um, I can tell you that at one point, uh, at 2012, uh, I did call people up to the mountain. There was about 30 of us living up there. And uh, there's tons of completely ridiculous stories that come from that. Um, I can tell you that um, there were many... Um, meetings and uh, groups formed in, in town, like environmental groups formed, or ones that were already formed, but let's say hadn't been engaging in the kind of activity that I, I began. And um, there would be big meetings in town, or, or I will be telling you the story of when we had a town hall meeting and the Minister of Forest decided to show up and, uh, and uh, exactly what I said to him. Okay, um, please remember that if you have sincerity and integrity, you know, if you are truly aligned with the miracle of life, which is connected to those trees, you can go out onto the land and you can fight for your mother earth and you can win. A lot of people might not want, you know, to admit that's what you did, but you know what I'm saying? You'll know. <laughs>